and welcome aboard in this short video tutorial we're going to talk about how to view a pre-plan in Streetwise CADLINK now as you probably know Streetwise CADLINK has a very robust and thorough pre-planning program uh, the entire pre-plan system is designed off the recommendations of the National Fire Protection Association standard on pre-incident fire plans which is NFPA 1620 now we're going to talk about viewing pre-plans. We'll talk about uh, actually performing a pre-plan in another video tutorial. There are a couple of different ways that you can look at pre-plans. We're going to start here on the main alert screen and let's say that we were en route to this particular uh, alert here at 560 River Highway. So we've marked en route and we wanted to look at pre-plans in the area of that particular call. Well, if we come over here and hit the pre-plan button, we're going to see a list of pre-plans. And this is what we call our pre-plan list view. Now, when we are looking at an alert, and we actually have an alert on the screen, the automatic default sort of this list is by proximity to that call. So what Streetwise does is actually compares the latitude and longitude of this call to the latitude and longitude of all the preplans in your system and it sorts the closest preplans to the top of the list. Now this can be pretty convenient if you get dispatched to a location without a specific address. Let's say you get uh, sent to uh, the vicinity of 5th and Main on a report of smoke in the area. Well. Uh, in those kind of calls you don't necessarily know exactly the address you're going to end up at and so what we do is we know the latitude and longitude of 5th and Main so we'll sort all the pre-plans in the immediate vicinity of 5th and Main to the top of the list so now you have a list sorted by distance to the call now there are a number of other ways that you can look at the list view up here in the upper right you can see that it's currently sorted by distance. Well, if we simply click on that, it'll give us the option to sort by name, which puts them in alphabetical order, or to sort by address, which starts sorting them by the address of the preplan. So there are two other very simple ways you can sort. We'll go ahead and sort back by distance again. There's also the ability to type into this search box a specific preplan that you're looking for. So if I knew, for instance, that I wanted to look at the Harris Teeter preplan, I can simply type in Harris and it's already going to sort the Harris Teeter preplan. So a number of different ways that we can actually find the specific preplan that we're looking for. Once we have located that preplan, then we can switch to what we call the detail view. That's done by simply clicking or tapping on that preplan and you can see that it brings up what we call the detail view and there are buttons or tabs as we like to call them across the top of the screen indicating the various sections of the preplan that you can view. Now it will always default to the first do uh, tab. These are the pieces of information that you're most likely to need prior to arrival. So this is the tab that you really would want to look at on your way to the call even if you didn't sort through all the remaining details until you found out that there was actually a fire and you needed them. For instance, it's going to give us the occupant type uh, emergency contacts. It'll tell us whether there's a key vault present, whether there are any exposures uh, that uh, we need to be concerned about, and the recommended initial actions. Now, if applicable, it'll also tell us if there's lightweight construction present and whether there's any kind of a sprinkler system. So, depending on the preplan and how you conducted it, there may be some additional information in this first due tab, but suffice it to say that the information present there are things that are going to help you prior to the arrival at the incident. 
Now once you've arrived and found out that there's actually some incident that requires a lot more information, then you can dive into any of these other tabs of information by simply tapping on one of them with your finger. So here we'll go into the Construction and Features tab, which tells us about when it was built, how many stories, the ground floor uh, area, uh, construction type, walls, roof type, floor construction, all kinds of other detailed information about construction water supply will give us information about the water supply uh, whether it's adequate uh, how to access it whether there are any seasonal variations and things like that fire systems and security give us uh, information about alarms uh, alarm systems sprinklers standpipe systems and so on building systems and utilities will be HVAC steam systems uh, boilers and the like special hazards will relate to things like hazmat and chemicals and radioactives life safety will be the tab that tells us about occupancies uh, the, the, the hours that the business is open how many occupants are, are occupants are typically in it uh, and that type of information all about the occupants in the life safety tab finally we have the attachments tab down here and that's where you will have any attachments photos PDF documents Excel spreadsheets things like that that have been uploaded as an attachment to this pre-plan those will show down here and if you've named them specifically they'll show the name and the type of attachment it is so here you see that we have uh, an image of the rear door showing the Knox box an image of the sprinkler connection at side B of the building and last but not least uh, for demo purposes here we've uploaded the Harris Teeter logo so if we want to look at any of these attachments all we have to do then is tap the attachment to open it and there we have the Harris Teeter uh, logo now obviously we've done this just for demo purposes uh, but you can see the logo is opened now when it opens I have three buttons on the bottom the one on the left would allow me to actually delete this uh, and if I wanted to do that I could hit delete and it will ask me if I'm sure that's what I want to do uh, so it's, it's a little difficult to delete it by accident the second button the X simply makes it go away uh, I'll reopen it and the button on the right opens it in whatever native applications you have on the tablet that would handle that file type. Now this is a JPEG file so if I hit that it's going to simply open it in the uh, gallery program or the photo program. Now Streetwise can uh, natively open that is open within the program itself uh, JPEGs, uh, PNG files, and PDF files. But if you have Excel spreadsheets or Word documents, those types of things, you'll need to launch those by clicking this right hand button in order to launch that particular attachment in some sort of third party application that you have on your tablet that can read an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that attachment and show you one other way that it's possible to view a preplan. I'm actually going to go back to the tactical map now and on the tactical map if we zoom out a little bit move over you're going to see that we have a preplan icon. Now the preplan icon is a small P with a little roof over it if you will sort of a uh, house looking uh, icon with a P in it and that indicates that there's a preplan for that particular location. Now anytime you see a preplan point on the map you can simply click on that to see what preplan it is. Now here we see that it's Griffin Brothers Auto Repair but now if I want to open that preplan directly from the tactical map I simply click anywhere in this box with my finger and it will open directly to that preplan. So we'll go into the detail view of the, that preplan directly from the tactical map. Now in another video tutorial we'll tell you how to actually create these preplans or edit them directly from your tablet device.